G'day all, welcome to another tutorial. So, a few changes I think I might I might put in place for these toots. Uh, for a start, I think uh, I'll try and do a, at least a little bit of coding at the end of all of the toots, just to keep this stuff practical instead of all theoretical. And I also want to move away now from SSE to the, the amazing AVX. Uh, this is uh, Advanced Vector Extensions, this is another SIMD extension to the x86 architecture and it's only available on the very newest CPUs so 2012 CPUs sort of onwards uh, you might have AVX support that's uh, Sandy Bridge and Ivy Bridge and also AMD's Bulldozer chips support this uh, it's an extremely exciting extension to the x86 architecture and it's actually massive massive extension it's a uh, yeah, we've not really seen such a big extension to the x86 architecture since the original SSE was introduced. That's how big it is. Okay, it requires OS support. Yeah, your operating system as well as your hardware needs to support AVX. So if you're using Windows 7, you're going to need the latest service packs. And if you're using Windows 8, I believe uh, it supports AVX out of the box. And the reason for OS support is that Windows, when it's performing context switching to give our program a little bit of time slice and to give other programs the system services and that sort of thing that it's running in the background, uh, when it performs those context switches, it actually needs to realize that uh, it's got to save the AVX registers, not just the uh, SSE registers. Yeah, so that's why it actually requires the OS support, because Windows has to save AVX registers as well. Alrighty, CPU ID. So this will be the actual function that we program at the end. Uh, just a little CPU ID detection program uh, to make sure that our CPUs understand AVX. Uh, it's actually function number one of CPU ID and the bit or the, the uh, flag that we want to check is bit number 28 of ECX after CPU ID function number one. So we'll do that at the end. Okay, in a nutshell, AVX is similar to the other SIMD extensions that we've been looking at, SSE and, and your MMX. Uh, the registers are actually twice as wide as the SSE registers. So here we're talking not 128 bits wide, uh, we're talking 256 bits wide. So the registers are absolutely jimongous. And we can work on 8 pack singles at once, SIMD style, or 4 packed doubles. And in addition to this, uh, most of the AVX instructions have a non-destructive version. There's two source operands and a destination operand, and the source operands aren't necessarily overwritten. Uh, this is this is a big departure from almost everything in the x86 architecture. I don't know if you've noticed, but almost every instruction in x86 architecture is destructive. So, you know, they they overwrite one of the source operands. But we've finally got an instruction set that doesn't necessarily do that. We'll have a look at that in just a minute. Okay, the pointer prefix. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna need to know the pointer prefix. So for a 256-bit pointer, uh, this is the prefix YMM word PTR. So it's something like this, basically V div PS, and that's the um, divide packed singles for AVX. Uh, YMMO, YMM1. Those are just two registers. And the pointer prefix, YMM word PTR, and then, you know, whatever register you're pointing with. Good. Alrighty, so the registers themselves, there's 16 registers in AVX, and they're named YMM0 through to YMM15. Each of them is 256 bits wide, and each of them is aliased to the 16 SSE registers. Yes, okay, so the 16 SSE registers, that's XMMO through to XMM15, are actually the lower 128 bits of the AVX registers in exactly the same way that the x87's ST, you know, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7 were aliased to the MMX registers. Once again, in, you know, a similar move, Intel decided not to create new register space on the actual CPU, but instead to alias these AVX registers to the SSE registers. Good stuff. Okay, so in a similar fashion to other SIMD registers, the AVX registers can actually be used for different sized data elements, and it's mostly just integers. Not integers. 
it's mostly just floating point. Yeah, it's not integers. I expect later um, that we'll get extensions that actually deal with integers as well, but for now it's just floating points. So we can use uh, eight packed singles, uh, four packed doubles could be in an AVX register, or we could have two XMM words, that's two 128-bit values, and of course there's a few instructions that use all 256 bits as a single value. And like the SSE uh, instruction sets, there's no real arithmetic instructions for 128 and 256 bit data operands. Uh, there's just a few things like, you know, MOV and there's a few broadcast instructions and that sort of thing that, that deal with those larger data types. Okay, so this is a really cool thing too. The, the SSE instructions, um, pretty much all have AVX versions. So the, the SSE instructions that work on doubles and singles in a packed way, uh, there's an AVX version of exactly the same thing, and it has the same mnemonic as well, pretty much, just with a V at the start. So we don't need to relearn everything. Yeah, the AVX instructions are pretty much the same as the SSE instructions. Uh, there's a few new ones, just a handful of new instructions. We've got some broadcasting instructions that fill all of the elements of an AVX register with some particular value. Uh, we've got some masked moves that allow us to do tricky sleights of hand to, uh, you know, imitate SIMD branching. Uh, we've got some ex extraction and insertion instructions. We've got some shuffling and some zeroing instructions. But look, the, the vast bulk of AVX instructions, there's, there's hundreds of them. Uh, the vast bulk of them are these SSE mnemonics, the same instructions from SSE. Uh, they do have a V at the start. Yeah, so instead of add PS, that's the SSE version of add packed singles, uh, we get something like V add PS, the AVX version of add packed singles. Uh, the integer, MMX, and scalar SSE instructions are not available. Yeah, we're only talking packed instructions here. Okay, so I think if we just have a bit of a look here um, at the way these instructions work, it's going to be pretty easy since we've looked at you know a lot of SIMD instructions before, but basically the SSE version, add packed singles, XMMO, XMM1, did something like this. Uh, yeah, just added each corresponding element and stored the results in the first operand. So, yeah, we're pretty used to that. Now the AVX version is only slightly different, but it's actually much more flexible. Uh, for a start, we add V to the beginning, so V add PS, like we just said. Uh, the registers are these 256-bit giant registers, so V add PS, Y MMO, Y MM1. But then the other difference is that we've actually got another operand, so there's three operands here, and this is where the non-destructive nature of AVX comes into play. Uh, what's actually added is the elements in the second and third operand, and the results are stored in the first. So the second and third operands aren't changed. Yeah, it's non-destructive. It doesn't change the sources. Very, very cool. Uh, yeah, basically, we add twice as many floating point values as well. So, yeah, the elements in YMM1 will be added to those in YMM2, and the results will be stored in YMM0. That's AVX, my friends. Alrighty, yeah, we're going to look at AVX a little differently from uh, previous SIMD instruction sets. Uh, if you want to have a, a bit of a squiz at all of the instructions, uh, you can just go to the programmer's manuals and have a look there, but I'm not going to introduce all of the instructions one after another like we have been for MMX and SSE. Uh, instead, I think we'll just program and uh, yeah, just get used to using these things. Uh, but for now, let's just have a look at detecting AVX with CPU ID. Okay, so that's enough of the slides. Here we are in Visual Studio 2012. If you've not got Visual Studio 2012, give it a download now. It's amazing. And if you're using uh, Windows 8, the non-desktop version or the Windows 8 version of Visual Studio 2012 is absolutely incredible. Amazing. And I think we'll do some shoots on that. It's, it's really, really cool. Anyway, we're not doing that now. What we're doing is detecting AVX support. Um, okay, so I might just add my build customization. Give us mass and row. And we'll change it to 64 bits. 
And the function that we're going to do, just to test if this CPU understands AVX, we go x times c and bool get AVX support flag. Uh, we're basically just going to call CPU ID and return true or false to see if our CPU understands AVX. You know, this is really just the first step to programming this uh, new extension. Anyway, if, if that, then see out with AVX, yay, something like that, else see out you know AVX buddy dot 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 let's give him a sad face as well no need to close any brackets um, okay so we better write this function now um, alright let's add an assembly file I'm just going to call mine assum dot assum because I'm lazy uh, dot code and what was the name of my function oh there it is Still in the uh, still in the old clipboard. It's a proc and we write n there for right n p n. Um, okay, so what did we say before? It was uh, bit twenty eight of ECX after um, CPU ID function number one. That gives us a support flag for AVX or not. Uh, so, uh, mod eax and 1, that's the function number, and call CPU ID. Uh, now I'm going to do this a little bit differently to, to the way that we checked for support flags in the past. I, I think this is a better way to do it, it's quicker anyway. But um, if we just make sure that eax is clear, and then we bt ecx and 28. Um, we clear EAX to zero and we bit test uh, bit number 28 of ECX and the BT instruction or the bit test instruction is actually going to set the carry flag to whatever ECX has as bit number 28. So that's going to be a one or a zero. And if EAX is clear, uh, then we add C, we add, we add, uh, yeah, we add the carry flag. So if, if the carry flag is one, uh, this is going to result in EAX being one. Or, or true in other words and if the carry flag is zero then it's going to result in EAX being set to zero or false in other words so this is just another way of testing if AVX is supported or not and I, th I think this is a better way I don't know it's up to you. you you only sort of run this once per app so it doesn't really matter how slow or, or quick it is but let's have a look how we go ah uh, you've no AVX buddy yeah, so that's really sad. But look, this is a this is a, a Phantom Two AMD Phantom Two. So when we come to do uh, AVX coding next shoot, uh, I'll actually find myself uh, an Intel i7, and that way we can uh, yeah hopefully run and debug our AVX programs. This particular CPU doesn't have AVX support, so yeah, I get that message. Hopefully you don't get that. Hopefully you get that AVX is supported on your CPU. And uh, you can code till your heart's content. Anyway, that's just a little introduction to AVX and one method for testing if AVX is supported or not. And next time, I think we'll get stuck into porting an algorithm from SSE to AVX. And I think this is going to be a really good way to introduce uh, both the AVX instructions and also just uh, a couple of, you know, my own techniques or, or the way that I use uh, SIMD instruction sets. So thank you very much for listening and have a good day. See you later.